Well, students, we're gonna be able to finish up your owls today. I would like you to make sure that we're doing the same things that we practiced last week. Please don't color on the marker line. Please make sure you're using the color wheel to trace with one color and fill with the color that's next to it. Uh, please make sure you're pressing the color on hard and then hold the oil pastels down low so they don't break. I still have this shape on the bottom, these tail feathers to do. So I'm gonna take pink and I'm gonna outline this shape down here, pressing it on hard. Be careful around that marker line. And then trace around that part. And then I'm gonna fill with a lighter pink like this. Pressing it on hard, holding it down low so that it doesn't break. If I were to hold it here, it could break. And any of these little pieces of oil pastel that have flaked off a little bit, I'm gonna just gonna shake off the paper once I'm done with this. So I've got that done, and then I'm going to just kind of shake that off and then I'm going to do this next shape with, I think I'm gonna do a blue and I'm gonna go with purple, similar to this inside shape. So go around this. Around that marker line and here. And then blue is next to purple. So I'm gonna take my purple, and we'll mix it into that. Kind of overlapping and going into the blue just a little bit to get a good mix. And then if you choose to do any white, white can be used on its own. You can see that I've used white in a few places. So white would be really the only color that I would use on its own. I'm gonna shake this off again to make sure that doesn't get into my white. So I'm gonna take this and any of these white dots I could do, the white claws, those white spaces. Um, and then please remember that black would be the last color to use. So use a little bit of black to do some of these shapes, but that would be the last thing to do. Once you have all of your Shapes done, all of your patterns. You can see I've got light green, dark green, and then orange peach, light green, dark green, orange peach. So do your patterns. Once that's done, I would like you to take a black. This can make things look better. It could make things look worse if you go too fast. So please look at how I'm gonna go back and forth on the line, and I'm gonna put an outline around the whole owl. I wanna be really careful that this is the last thing that I do. It's gonna put kind of a shadow around my owl. These circles take a while to do. They're really kind of tricky to do. So you can see I'm going back and forth on the line. Because sometimes I'll have students go like this. And if you go like this, that's too fast. That does not look like my best. So please make sure that you're going around this carefully, pressing it on hard. And we're gonna go around the whole thing. Since this took me a long time to do, um, I already did the other side of my owl with black outline so that this doesn't take quite as long to show you. So I'm gonna follow that right in close here around these, go around this. If you need to turn the paper as you go, go ahead and do that. Go around this. Being careful where I'm touching the paper too because black could get fingerprints all over everything if I'm not careful. Once I have this done, I'm gonna go around here and around that. Then I would go around all of these. You can see that I've already done that. I've already outlined all of this stuff.
all the way. I went all the way around here. So that's why this side looks darker already because I traced that before I started the example. Once you've traced all the way around it, you get back to the beginning. I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna shake it off a little bit. And I'm going to decide what I'm gonna do for my background. So the background, I'm gonna scooch these over and show you. So this would be one good example of going from red to orange to yellow. So I've got red, red, orange, orange, yellow, orange, yellow. If you wanted to do um, purples, you can see I could go from purple to just kind of a regular purple to light purple. And I could go, I've got to switch these into pink, into peach. Um, for green, you can go from forest green, regular green, uh, yellow green into the sea green. And if you were to do blue, it could work well to do midnight blue, regular blue, turquoise blue, sky blue, and then the sea blue works with both blue and green. Now I'm gonna do mine with the greens and I would like you to go up and down like this to do kind of a shading motion. The only time I would go this, go this way is at the bottom of the paper. Otherwise, the rest of the time, I'm going to be going like this. I'm gonna be going up and down. Press it on hard, do a little bit of it. Then switch to your next green. I'm gonna to go to the one that's just a little bit lighter than this one. I'm gonna go around. I caution you about using the red, orange, yellow, because you don't want too much yellow to get into your um, onto your black, so that black line can make that yellow look kind of dirty. So just be cautious about that. I'm gonna go up to here, I'm gonna go around this, I'm gonna go across the paper, then I'll go to the sea green, and then I'm going over top of that color just a little bit. Now that I've done that row, then I'm gonna just repeat. And I'm gonna go up and down, kind of follow it across. It looks like it would go right in here. That's like behind my feet, it would be in here. And we'll go up and down here. And once I get into a rhythm, it goes pretty well. I don't expect you to go as quickly as I'm going. I'm going quickly so you get more work time. But this is just gonna create a really beautiful shaded background. So if we can see any of the purple paper underneath, just take it and fill it in. Um, if somebody is using one of the colors, then I would think about picking, so if you get started after they start, I would think about picking something different. Then they won't all be the same, and you won't have you waiting to share colors. So that's why I said, I showed that red, orange um, into yellow, or using different colors of purple into pink or doing different colors of blue. And that's why I'm doing different colors of green. I'm gonna carry this all the way up to the top, being careful with how I'm touching my paper. So I definitely don't wanna rub this and smear this all together. So if your owl is bigger, you're gonna have less background space. If you realize that you have a lot to color and we're running low on time, sometimes it's not such a bad idea to color larger spaces. So instead of having it just be like a little zigzag, maybe it's gonna be a bigger amount of space that I'm coloring. Then I won't have to switch colors so often. Just continue the pattern all the way up to the top. One of the nice things about the oil pastels is if you were to make a little bit of a mistake, usually you can just cover over it. So like if I thought that didn't look very good, I can just mix this and blend that together. But all of the colors that I'm doing, I'm pressing it on hard and I'm always going up and down. So I'm just about finished. 
And at the very end, I'm gonna shake the paper off and make sure that I didn't get it on any of my other designs. So go around here, into here. And space. this is the only time that I'm gonna go this way with it along the top. So that's the only time I'm going side to side. Otherwise, I'm always going up and down. And let's see how it looks. All right. Yeah, I think that looks pretty cool. So I'm gonna shake this off. If you get a little bit on the table, we'll end up wiping that off later. I will show you these ones too. Um, this one is an example with the blues from the midnight blue and then regular blue and then turquoise blue sky blue and then it does have the sea blue too this one is an example of the purples from dark purple to light purple to magenta into pink and then into peach um, i don't have a red orange yellow example but you're welcome to try that too so let's have fun working on these <laughs> 